at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Council Member Tucker? Here. Council Member Alicia Martinez? Here. Council Member Mendoza? Here. Mayor Pro Tim Ocarano? Here. And Mayor Brown? Here. Everybody, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? Yeah. Do we have any adjustments to tonight's agenda? Yes. 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 <laughs> Yes, yeah. Madam Mayor, there are uh, two claim or two warrants on your claims and warrants report that would need to be held out for separate action. Uh, Ms. Turner, do we have any action taken in closed session? Yes, um, the council discussed two, three items of anticipated litigation with council and direction was given, no reportable action. The council also discussed real property negotiations related to item A2. Uh, agency uh, negotiator was given direction. That concludes my report. Moving on to item C, public appearances. Matt is not appearing on the agenda. If you wish to address the council concerning any item within the council's jurisdiction, please raise your hand and be acknowledged by the mayor. At that time, state your name and address for the record. The mayor reserves the right to place a time minute on each person's presentation of three minutes. It is requested that longer presentations be submitted to the council in writing. Do we have any public comments for tonight? Seeing none. Madam Clerk, did we get any um, submitted via email? No. Thank you. Moving on to item D, special presentations. We have employee introductions. Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, members of the council, unfortunately my uh, new parks employee was unable to attend tonight, but uh, Carlos Becerra has just been uh, onboarded with the parks department as a new full-time position, so uh, we welcome him to the city's uh, park staff and crew, and uh, we're expecting great things out of him. Thank you. Welcome. Mayor and city council, uh, I take great pleasure in introducing uh, Officer Michael Cortez, uh, he's an Imperial Valley resident, and although he was a Spartan, he now lives <laughs> here in, uh, with his wife and kids and raising them as tigers. Um, he comes to us by way of ICSO, seven years experience, and we're happy to have him. He's, uh, he's, he's through most of his training, and he'll be going out there and being an asset for us, so we're glad to have him. Welcome. Welcome to the city. What we have today in the Public Works Department, we have our Christian Felix and our Francisco. I get. I get. Uh, started in March, one is streets and one is general business. Welcome. Got all of them? Okay. They're okay from the HR. Now we're going to move on to item D2 um, for Autism Awareness Month. And we have a proclamation um, declaring April 2023 as Autism Awareness Month and April 2nd, 2023 as World Autism Awareness Day in the City of Imperial. Whereas autism is a result of a neuro neurological disorder that affects the normal functioning of the human brain and can affect anyone regardless of race, ethnicity, gender, or socioeconomic socio background. And whereas symptoms and characteristics of autism may present themselves in a variety of combinations and can result in significant lifelong impairment of an individual's ability to learn, develop healthy interactive behaviors, and understand verbal as well as nonverbal communication. And whereas the autism spectrum disorder is a reality that affects millions of families every day and more children are being diagnosed, resulting in rates as high as 1 in 36 children nationally with four times greater pre prevalence among boys than girls, 
according to the Centers for Disease Control. And whereas while our nation has made progress in supporting those with ASD, we're only beginning to understand the factors behind the challenges they face. And as the effort to address autism continues, doctors, therapists, and educators can help individuals with autism overcome or adjust to its challenges and provide early, accurate diagnosis, appropriate education, intervention, and therapy that are vital to the future growth and development. And whereas in April, we recognize those with autism achieving and breaking down barriers and recommit to helping those on the autism spectrum reach their full potential at all times. And whereas the city of Imperial, California proudly supports the annual observance of Autism Awareness Month in, autism, in World Autism Awareness Day and the hope that it will lead to a better understanding of the autism spectrum disorder celebrating the work of advocates, professionals, and family members, and all who work to build a brighter tomorrow alongside those with aut autism. Now thereby it be resolved, I, Catherine Burnworth, Mayor of the City of Imperial, hereby proclaim uh, April 2023 as Autism Awareness Month and April 2nd, 2023 as World Autism Awareness Day in the City of Imperial to raise public awareness, acceptance, and inclusion of those with autism and the myriad of issues surrounding the disorder, as well to increase the knowledge of the programs that have been and are being developed to support individuals with autism and their families. And if we can have um, or ACE, the guy, or autism of Imperial County come up. Yes. Hi. Hello. Sorry about the giggles there. Sometimes city council meetings give him the giggles. Sometimes we know it can be a serious business, but... I wish they gave me the giggles more. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, thank you, Mayor. Mayor Pro Tem, city council members, and cousin. Um, <laughs> first, you know, let me say thank you to all of you. You're all awesome. Um, of course... In, in our neck of the woods, we spell awesome a little bit differently. A U S O M E. Um, that's the way we spell awesome. Um, what can I say? Uh, we're just finishing up the touches of this year Autism Awareness Fair, thanks to Tony um, and his team. All the booths have been booked, um, the music has been booked. Um, the voluntolds for the dunk tank have graciously accepted that they've been told to volunteer. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, and, um, we're hoping that, uh, next year we get some more volunteers from, uh, from some of our council members and, and then some, then the voluntolds that we had to do this year. Um, it's been a, an awesome year for ASIC. Um, last year at this time we were just putting together the inaugural autism fair and in that time. We had the fair, we brought Temple Grandin in to speak, and if you know who Temple Grandin is, and if you don't, she's the most prominent person in autism throughout the United States. Um, we had our annual baseball game hosted by Southwest High School uh, versus Central, and both schools handed out school letters for the ICOE students, um, which is, something special because they can't earn it academically. Mm. They can't earn it scholastically. Mm. In, in reality, they just can't earn a letter at all. Mm. And uh, my, my son has his own letterman's jacket now. Um, he likes staffs, so I found one. <laughs> um, leave it alone, buddy. Um, we also got the privilege of uh, attending this year's uh, autism acceptance game uh, at uh, Peco Park, where the San Diego Padres were hosting the um, Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh, it was a great game. Um, they ended up giving us a, a bunch of uh, San Diego Padre autism hats. Um, they also, uh, you know, uh, in the bottom ninth inning, walked off the Diamondbacks. Sorry, Diamondback fans. Um, with back-to-back -back homers, so it was another great day. Um, um, plus all our events that we've had throughout the year, only to come back full circle to this year's Autism Awareness Fair. 
Um, you know, it's it's. I have to thank you guys, the the Parks and Recreation Department, um, the Police Department, the Fire Department, and your entire staff, the entire city. Um, you know, it's it's the autism fair is not just for um, families, but especially those for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. To be able to put something together like that at this magnitude is just, you know, I, I'll never get used to saying the word awesome. Um, I also want to thank Gloria Brambilla. She helped put the proclamation together. I know it was it was long, but it's all every single word in there means so much. Um, as well as the the work she does throughout the community. Um, I want to thank um, the ASIC board members and coordinators. Without them, anything we do throughout the year just isn't possible. Um, you know, and and although this might feel like I'm receiving some sort of award show or we're on an award show, just thanking everybody that we can. In true honesty, that's because it really is. I mean, you guys have given us a a very special gift to have an autism fair, um, you know, and and it's not just for the city of Imperial, it's not just for the autistic community, but it's for the entire county, and, and we hope that it just gets bigger and better every year. So having said that, um, uh, all I can say is, is, again, thank you, and I hope to see you all at Eager Park between 12 p.m. and 5 p.m., um, and it's going to be an awesome event. What do you think, buddy? Is it going to be awesome? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Say thank you. Take care. Say thank you. Take care. You're thank welcome. You're welcome. Now, I just want to thank you for all the hard work you do. Um, this is such, like, it holds such a special place in my heart. When I was in college and it's in a sorority, our uh, national philanthropy that we supported was Autism Speaks. And at that time, I had really only known one person who his grandparents helped founded this. And so, um, obviously, now I have a few more kids that are special to my heart that have been diagnosed with autism. And the resources you guys provide for families are amazing. Yeah, so, we, thank you. Yeah, we just try our best to, to help provide knowledge and experience and and information to, to parents. We're just parents sharing with other parents our experiences. So. You provide a community, so there's no parent should have to go through it alone, and that's priceless. So thank you for all you do for not only our constituents, but for everybody. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, thank you for everything. <laughs> and, I, and I do look forward to uh, Saturday. <laughs> you know what? I and you know what? Well, we should. Uh, I, I got told today. It said, "Hey, I heard our KXO that you're gonna be dunked." I was like, "Absolutely." So. You're gonna be dunked. Don't worry, I'm going in the dunk tank too, so, so you can get me back. There you go. And me, I just wanted to say, you know, I was at El Centro City Council at meeting last night. Whenever they came in and talked, and whenever I saw you here tonight, and you were alone, I was gonna say, I'm I'm offended that we don't have anybody leading our pledge of allegiance. But at least we got him here for the the acceptance of the award. <laughs> we'll try to get him here earlier next week. <laughs> Chief. Chief, we got a spot up here for you. We got a spot up here for you. <laughs> you're part of the, you're part of the team here. And if there's any way we can get a copy of that picture, all right. Thank you. <laughs> so now we're moving on to. Item D3, um, which is Donate Life Month, um, donate, National Donate Life Month Proclamation. Uh, whereas organ, eye, tissue, marrow, and blood donation are life-giving acts recognized worldwide as expressions of compassion to those in need. 
or has more than 106,000 individuals nationwide and more than 20,000 in California are currently on the national organ transplant waiting list and on average 17 people die each day while waiting. Whereas the need for organs, for donated organs is especially urgent in Hispanic, Latino, and African American communities. Whereas a single individual's donation of heart, lungs, liver, kidneys, pancreas, and small intestine can save up to eight lives. Whereas donation of tissue can save and heal the lives of more than 75 others. Whereas organ donors saved more than 40,000 lives last year, the most ever. Whereas any person can register to be an organ, eye, and tissue donor regardless of age or medical conditions. Whereas being a registered donor does not impact the quality of life-saving medical care a person receives in an emergency. Whereas California residents can sign up with the Donate Life California Donor Registry online at any time by visiting DonateLifeCalifornia.org or for Spanish speakers, DonateVidaCalifornia.org. Whereas California residents can sign up to be an organ, eye, and tissue donor when applying for or renewing their driver's license or ID cards at the California Department of Motor Vehicles. Whereas California residents interested in saving a life through living kidney donation may visit livingdonationcalifornia.org. Now, therefore, be it resolved that in recognition of National Donate Life Month, the month of April 2023 is hereby proclaimed Donate Life Month in the city of Imperial. And in doing so, we encourage all Californians to check yes online or when applying or when applying for or renewing their driver's license or ID card at the DMV. On to consent agenda. All items appearing under consent agenda will be acted upon by the city council in one motion without discussion. Should any council member or any person request that any item be considered separately, that item will be taken up at the time as determined by the mayor. Do you have any, any adjustments to the? Yes, um, Madam Mayor and, and council. Um, Claim number 110224 is for uh, Mayor Pro Tem Amparano, and 110204 is, uh, is for the mayor. And so those should be acted upon accordingly. I'll make the motion to pull those two. I have a second. A second. A motion and a second. Uh, please vote. Motion carries five zero. We have a motion for the to approve the consent agenda without those two. Motion to approve the consent agenda without the two um, items that were pulled. Second. I have a motion by Obeso Martinez and a second by Tucker. Please vote. Motion carries five zero. Motion to approve one one zero two zero four. Second. Uh, Burnworth. I have a motion by Obeso Martinez and a second by Tucker. Please vote. Motion carries 4-0 with one abstain by uh, Mayor Burnworth. I have a motion for the final. I'll make a motion to approve 110224 Amparano. Second. I have a motion by Obeso Martinez and a second by Tucker. Please vote. Motion carries 4-0 with one abstain by um, Mayor Pro Tem Amparano. We 
you. Moving on to items F1, action items. Item F1, uh, subject department of California Department of Resources, Recycling and Recovery, Cal Recycle. Good evening, Council. Uh, you may already know Cal Recycle offers funding and grant opportunities to cities throughout the state. The goal is to reduce, reuse, recycle solid waste and the preservation of landfill capacity. Cal Recycle requires the City Council to adopt a resolution in the attached form. This resolution allows the city manager to execute all documents related to the application and grant management, and staff recommends adoption of resolution number 23-10, and I'll stand with any questions that you may have. Do you have any questions from the council? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion by Councilmember uh, Mendoza and a second by Councilmember Tucker. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. <laughs> Thank you. Moving on to item F2, uh, subject purchase of equipment for Parks and Recreation Department. Mr. Lopez. Good evening, uh, Madam Mayor, members of the Council. Uh, staff had originally budgeted $50,000 in uh, municipal budget approved for 22-23 for a compact size front end tractor. Uh, the department, uh, after a while, has determined um, during the course of operations that an articulating lift would be uh, more of an urgent need at this moment than a front end uh, tractor. The department would also uh, request that City Council allow us to proceed with the purchase um, and uh, allow the department uh, and the city manager's office the discretion to approve quotes not to exceed the amount of $50,000. Um, and you yeah, and I'll stand for any questions. Yeah, if I may. Um, I mean, I know what this is for, but what is our use for this? Tree trimming. For the tree trimming, our bucket truck's not doing it. Huh? So, to get into uh, those areas. no, so the bucket truck and Jackie's equipment has been very helpful. There are certain uh, areas throughout the city where we have to drive on to the right of way, and it's very hard to do that with a truck that weighs that much uh, without compromising sidewalks and different things. Uh, this piece of equipment allows us to drive the actual vehicle with the tow behind, it's more of a compact. Uh, piece of equipment uh, let weighs a lot less, and um, it uh, is still it allows us to reach uh, at the same height. Let me ask one additional question. This isn't enough to do those park lights, are they? Yes. So we can reach those high lights. Yeah. So it's fifty-five feet uh, vertically. So it, this also allows us to get right up on to different things and get closer. And vertically, we can reach the baseball field lights as well. Awesome. Yeah. Over to it. I have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Amparano and a second by uh, Council Member Mendoza. Please vote. Yay on it. They haven't ordered one yet. So there are pro there is product availability right away. Um, what I did ask for is the city met just in case they sell it in the meantime, but there is some available now. Moving Sorry. on. Oh. oh, sorry. Motion carries 5-0. Sorry, Madam Clerk. Moving on to item F3, uh, adoption of vehicle use policy. Ms. Smith. Good evening, Madam Mayor and members of the council. Uh, we would request approval and adoption of the vehicle use policy. Um, the purpose of the policy is to address the use of city-owned and privately-owned vehicles operated in the course of city business. Um, the use of city-owned vehicles shall be relied upon as the primary means of vehicle usage as it provides the greatest control over operating costs, usage, maintenance, inspection, and insurance. Uh, and this policy, uh, the policy provisions apply to all vehicles operated um, and driven in the course of city business. And I will um, stand for any questions. And I'll entertain a motion. I have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Amparano and a second by Council Member Obeso Martinez. Please vote. Motion carries 
motion carries 5-0. I could, I guess I should have asked this before. It's not going to change my vote. Do we, is this replacing a policy and, or do we not have one and this is a new policy? Uh, it is a uh, new policy okay. and encompasses um, quite a bit. Okay. Thank you. Moving to Moving on to item F4, Subject Energy Sustainability Business Case Study. Mr. Morita. Yes, uh, uh, Madam Mayor and, and Council. Uh, what this item would do if approved by the Council, it would allow uh, Schneider Electric to perform uh, a business, what, what was referred to as a business case analysis. Uh, and what that would <clears throat> basically provide us is information about uh, potential improvements that could be made with the idea being that uh, energy savings would uh, 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 pay the cost of those improvements. At, at this point, what you'll note from the staff report is that this portion of, of, the, of that whole process uh, uh, is done at, at no expense to the city. <clears throat> Schneider recognizes that <clears throat> we have a procurement policy and there's state law in the public contracts code uh, that would be implicated before we proceed with actual work. Uh, uh, but this, so this is work they do with the understanding that there is that process. Um, uh, Mr. Uh, Colby from Schneider Electric is also participating in this meeting uh, uh, by way of uh, uh, Zoom, and he can answer any other questions you might have with respect to this uh, letter. Have any questions from the council? Um, yes, if you could just kind of explain the process. Uh, sure. Hello, this is Ryan Colby. Um, good evening, Mayor Burnworth and council. Um, thanks for having us and giving it, me an opportunity to speak. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, so the basic process we call it a business case, and we would um, we would uh, collaborate with your city staff. From the, can you hear me? I'm sorry. Yes, we can hear you. Um, so we would collaborate with your city staff on, on the front end, and all we would need. Uh, so we, uh, I'll back up. We start off with a letter of a uh, letter of interest that would be signed, and that would give us um, the ability to allocate resources within Schneider to come to the city, take a look at the facilities, work with your staff to understand um, processes and areas where we could find improvements. And then at the end of that, we would generate um, a report that we would furnish back to the city and talk about the different areas where energy savings um, would be the main scope of, uh, uh, of the opportunities that we would uncover. And in addition to that, we would be talking about the feasibility of um, the regional sports park that um, the city of Imperial has um, expressed interest in learning more about and find ways to you know, make it come to fruition and Schneider would be able to help with that as well down the road. Or Dennis, whenever we were looking, did we actually go out and try and find someone to do this or did they come to us? And if so, were they the only company that came to us asking to do this type of study? Yes, we, we did have discussion with, with uh, other folks. There are other folks that do similar things. We felt like, uh, Schneider uh, was was best positioned to uh, do the best job at, at this point uh, in time. Uh, Schneider, I, I, I believe, is also doing uh, has uh, already engaged in this process and is doing work with the city of El Centro uh, as well as Central High School District. Uh, so, because that there there isn't any cost involved. We, we did not proceed through our usual pro procurement process, although we did uh, 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 test the market, if you will, in terms of the availability, and we felt like Schneider uh, would provide the best service at this point. And I just also wanted to find out if Schneider does this study and it is used at a later time to make any changes or improvements, and we do go through the proper pr procurement from that, I'm wanting to ensure or make sure that there's nothing proprietary that is included in that uh, study results saying that this service needs to be done, but Schneider happens to be the only one that can do that. 
Uh, this is Brian again. And, and that, yeah, that's not the case. Nothing in the, there's no obligation to the city to do anything or exclude anything, or there's no proprietary information that will be shared um, through the report that the city wouldn't. Once the report's furnished to the city, the city has discretion to use it however they please. And, and whenever Schneider prepares their proposal in response to the RFP for the work, is any of the cost of the study passed along as part of that co that proposal? No, it's not. Okay, thank you. Do have any other questions? With that, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. Authorization to submit letter of interest. Schneider Electric for business case study involving energy sustainability and regional park evaluation. Do I have a second? Seconded. I have a motion by Councilmember Tucker and a second by Mayor Pro Tem Amparano. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to um, G department reports or item G1 department reports. Do we have any department reports? Chief Frank Shaw. Yes, I'd like to report that uh, in the month of March, we met with the recruits at the Imperial Valley College Police Academy uh, with the hopes that we can draw them in to, uh, to work for us, keeping uh, the talent here in the valley helps retain uh, officers for our positions. Um, we've been working with our El Centro uh, police counterparts. Uh, we've used some of their equipment to deploy around our city for crime detection uh, equipment, uh, specifically the theft calls. Um, so we're, we're excited to use some of that at this point. Uh, met with the Imperial County Sheriff's Department um, Kicked off initial talks for the MOU for the dispatch services, and we'll be uh, moving that forward a little bit. And finally, we met with the uh, Imperial Unified School District in regards to the SRO uh, MOU, and uh, those are initial talks as well, and looking at uh, some of the things that we may need to, to move uh, moving forward. So thank you. Thank you, Chief. Any others? Uh, Madam Mayor, just really quick, um, James kind of went over the autism event we're going to have this Saturday here at Eager from 12 to 5, so I kind of wanted to invite everybody from the public, everybody in here to attend. I think it's going to be a really great thing uh, for a really good cause. Um, Color Fest, right after that, uh, April 22nd, uh, downtown Imperial from 5 to 9. And then also uh, summer programs are coming down. They're going to kick off June 12th. Uh, we encourage anybody watching that's uh, 16 years of age or older to apply for our summer uh, program uh, jobs that we have available through the city. Uh, and uh, that's all I have. When will those jobs be posted? They're already posted on our City of Imperial website, awesome. and they close uh, next Friday. Awesome. Thank yes. you. Do you have any of those department reports? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, the sinkhole pipe repair at the Sky Ranch Park area will be part of the construction site. Project is done outside of our lawn and the tree. Good job. <laughs> Good to hear. Hopefully, no more sinkholes anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any other department reports? Seeing none, um, Mr. Morita for city manager report. Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, just just very quickly, uh, the the uh, the city assistant city manager and myself are attending a training. That's why we're not there. Uh, the training is is sponsored by the California Joint Powers Insurance Authority on the subject of uh, executive uh, training, and uh, the JPIA. Uh, provides uh, this uh, the uh, the training at no expense to the city and and includes uh, uh, the, the training and the hotel and, and meals. 
So it was it was an opportunity that I felt uh, uh, very important to take advantage of of some some excellent speakers, retired city managers, um, uh, uh, many of whom are involved with the uh, International City Managers Association. Uh, with respect to the, the program that Chief Crankshaw mentioned, uh, we, we will be bringing to you uh, uh, the details of that program for your, for your approval. Uh, the idea being that it, it, it would be a, we see it as a potential uh, a way to uh, 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 re recruit uh, uh, police officers. And, and so that, that would be the goal of uh, engaging uh, uh, candidates at that early stage. Uh, so, but it'll be coming before you because it will, it will involve uh, uh, creating uh, positions for uh, uh, the recruits. And so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll report further with respect to the, the, this training at, at your next council meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morita. Moving on to mayor and council member reports. We'll start to my right with uh, council member Mendoza. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, we've been pretty busy since the, we last met. Um, I, we, I did attend the ribbon cutting ceremony at the Heritage at Dahlia Ranch. That was a great opportunity to see the work that's been done out there. Um, the ribbon cutting comes a little late. They've actually already had a good section of homes that have already been sold and occupied. It's just they they realized they had never really done a, had the opportunity to do a ribbon cutting, so they did it then. Um, I was able to attend the State of the County address in Calipatria. Um, got a lot of good information, or got a lot of good, good information of how, where the county is at right now. Um, myself and uh, Mayor Pro Tem Amparano and, and Council Member Ido Beso Martinez were able to attend the Little, uh, the Little League opening ceremonies. Um, the th things were a little more rushed, and unfortunately, they were about an hour ahead of schedule. So the, t the other two weren't there for the first pitch, so it was left up to me, and I am not a baseball player. Um, I can't say it got there before it hit the ground, but it did get to the catcher. Like a typical Dodger fan. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> I was also able to attend the League of California City um, dinner up in uh, Town Pump. It was a huge gathering of all the local officials and, and city personnel. And uh, we got they have the opportunity, they give us an opportunity to do some bragging. And I have to say I'm pretty proud of Imperial and all the bragging we were able to do there. Def we definitely stood out. Um, we attended the Blues Brews and Barbecue, and I thank everybody at the city staff. That was event was awesome. It was a great turnout. The music was fantastic. I'm so happy that they moved that stage a little closer. So we got we got people out there dancing. We had people just sitting out there watching the band and participating. And I know it's a humongous un undertaking to our staff, and I thank each and every one of you because that was that was awesome. And then. Uh, Lastly, today I was able to attend the White House Infrastructure Roundtable with Congressman Raul Ruiz. Um, just they spent an hour laying out the type of funding that's coming down the pike. Some's already available. There's more coming that'll be coming for different um, different buckets of money for different issues. And it was just a kind of a, an informational uh, type of thing. Um, we are uh, Tony already brought up the autism awareness, and as as did Jimmy, and we hope to see everybody there. And even though we currently do not employ dispatchers and we're going through a contract to continue working with the county, I'd be remiss if I didn't have a place in my heart for the uh, April, month of April is National Telecommunicators Month. So to all of my fellow previous fellow dispatchers out there, thank you for all you do. That's a very tough job for some very special people. And, and I, I, I applaud all of you for the month of April for the National Telecom telecommunications in the week <laughs> or month sorry and that's it i'm done uh, moving on to the council member obeso martinez so i attended a lot of the events that miss uh, mendoza mentioned and then um, i had the opportunity to attend the imperial county farm farm bureau ag tour um, who knew there was different types of bees? I didn't know. I didn't know there was only honeybees. So I got to learn a lot about the different uh, modalities of how we grow seed here. Um, 
what they harvest here. So that was a really eye-opening experience. You live here in the valley and know that we have a lot of fields, but didn't know the processes behind that. So I was really grateful for that. I also attended the Best Step Forward 5K. That was really awesome last weekend. Um, that was one of our other autism support groups that we have here in the valley. And so I took out our Boy Scout troop, Troop 4070. That's a local Boy Scout troop here. So I took them out, made them work, and um, they helped to volunteer their time as well. And then lastly, um, I serve on the MANA board, and a lot of our Frank Wright students went to our youth leadership conference. So we had over 60 students who attended from all over the Imperial Valley. So we're really thankful that our students came out. And they did a, a leadership conference, um, a half day, so they got to learn from a lot of different um, people here in the Valley. Um, STEM programs, leadership programs, career paths, and so thanks to our Frank Wright students for coming out. <laughs> hey, they're filling it up. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Amparano. So I just, I just have a couple of them. I, uh, I did also get to attend the Cal City's uh, uh, quarterly meeting in Winter in Winter Haven, Westmoreland. Uh, I think it went very well. Very good attendance. Um, and so, being the president of the, our division, my next goal is to bring that back to Imperial this next meeting. So. I'm going to shoot for May to try to bring it somewhere in the city of Imperial. So we don't have to drive. Everybody else will. Um, so good attendance on that. I did uh, also get a chance to, uh, uh, was given the, I was, you know, uh, chosen as a judge for our tri-tip. I do got to say, that's tough. That's a tough job. A um, lot of good food. Uh, the creativity behind it that people have is amazing. Um, so my hats off to all the, those that participated. Uh, they made it very difficult, but um, I think it all worked out very well um, with that. Um, please join us on Saturday for the uh, Autism Fair. Like we have heard throughout today, um, I will be in the dunk tank. Uh, so come support, bring some money, <laughs> throw a lot of balls and see if you can get me in the water. So definitely good cause so I'm definitely looking forward to that and then uh, just uh, I think we did pretty good after Monday's storm I think we fared out pretty pretty well I don't see too much damages but thanks to our crews everything's looking really nice out there so keep up the good work other than that I'll leave the rest up to our Madam Mayor Thank you so I also uh, attended the League of Cities dinner in Westmoreland and I'm very proud of all the hard work that our staff does and I get a brag on all of you um, I try to remind them all that we have the best staff um, and we're doing amazing things. So thank you guys because um, you make it really easy to brag on all of you. Um, I was also able to attend the tri-tip cook-off. Um, I got to announce the winners and so that was cool. My kids were very upset that they were only there for 10 minutes because they had to go to their uncle's 40th birthday party. So I think that speaks volumes that people of all ages love our events. Um, Last week, the mayor pro tem, myself, and uh, assist city manager, Dennis Morita, and assistant city manager, Alexis Brown, we all traveled back to Washington, D.C., um, and met with our lobbyist group, which is David Church and Associates. Um, we had meetings with, you know, Congressman Reese. We had meetings with Senator Feinstein's office, Senator Padilla's office, um, Department of Parks. Um, Department of Transportation, the COPS Division, uh, Department of Justice. And what we do for all of those, there's various different grant applications that we have in, and we like to put a face to it and really tell them, you know, why, you know, they should select us for their grant. Um, but sometimes we get a lot of information from them. Um, you know, there's various different projects. You know, I know everybody's heard about our Highway 86 project, you know, for the beautification of that. We also talked about... We call it a town site project, which is a $14 million project to redo a lot of the um, a lot of the streets within uh, the we, we like all like to call old Imperial. Um, so if awarded those, you know the first three streets would be Seventh um, Street, Tenth Street, and Fourteenth Street, and those would be reconstruction and with the storm, you know, sidewalk, curb, gutter, infrastructure, and everything in place as well. So we're hopeful that we can get some of those monies and see some of the, you know, fruition of going back there um, come to life. Last year we lobbied, one of them was for our 
incubator kitchen project, which we lobbied for that, and we did just get awarded that. So it's nice to, you know, see you get some wins and your time is well spent. But our staff, our city manager staff, the mayor pro tem, um, did an amazing job. So it's very stressful when you have to go back there and, you know, you get intimidated at times, but it was great. And then um, came back, and first thing Monday we had – or. Monday afternoon, a uh, city manager and myself met with our state senator, uh, Steve Padilla's office, kind of introduced him about, you know, what the city of Imperial is, you know, projects that they can help them out, help us out on. And so we're going to start working with our state lobbying team to see how we can help each other. But for me, one of my goals is to build uh, our relationship with our legislators so they know that we are the city of Imperial, we're not the county of Imperial, um, you know, and just kind of rebuild those so they can help us out, so. With that, I will adjourn this meeting at 7.46 until the next uh, regularly scheduled meeting, Wednesday, April 19th at 7 p.m.